Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert, that's me. This video contains things that I encounter throughout the day. If for some reason I complete a task and you would like to see the details, you can click on the link in the description area below. This video also contains tips and tricks that I learned throughout the years. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. Thank you very much for watching. Kicking off the Tinker Day. About to soak the exhaust of in this PB blaster so I can get them nuts off with my tool. Should have had them soaking the last couple of days. But usually 30 minutes is fine. So I'm going to soak those. Clean off this cam cover. Check see if it's raining again. If it's not raining, I'm going to go ahead and mount this head. Let me get these doused. This PB blaster. I need to find something about that big around that I could put a cap on so it's not smelling up the place. Couple things you should know. Shake the can. Harmful or fatal if swallowed. The vapor is harmful. Excessive inhalation may be fatal. Cause eye and skin irritation. Mm -mm -mm. This is not echo friendly stuff people. Since 1957, they've been destroying the planet. So that's my solution. I'm going to set a rag over it to slow down the vapors. And then, like I said, I'm going to find something that I can screw the lid on and just keep that stuff on standby for doing cylinder heads. Time to get all this anaerobic sealant and stuff off the cam cover and top of the head. So you could take a razor blade. Rake it flat, scrape that stuff off that way. You could take some other kind of plastic buffer thing and scrape that stuff off that way. You just can't gouge this gum marking it up here. That's not good. Got a stainless steel razor blade rubbing it on aluminum. Gotta be real careful you don't gouge into it. But if you got a clean razor blade, you could usually shave it off like that. Keeping the razor blade 90 degrees and rubbing it across there lightly. The best way is a brass brush. It's, it's usually softer than the aluminum. And you just got to brush it until you get all the anaerobic sealing off. You can't see or feel it. Now, I don't know if feeling it is, is bad, but, you know, you got to get as much as you can off. Like right there, there's a coating of it. And I brushed it off of here already. So, wet your brush and brush it on there. Or rake a razor across it. Be careful with the razor. You don't want to feel any gouges. You don't want to cut into it. You can cut it easy. But get all that anaerobic sealant off of there. The dry stuff. Top surface of the head is already clean. Very clean. Just need to wipe that with acetone before I bolt the cam cover on. Now, one thing I will say is lately, I say the past year or two, the Volvo oil well seals seem to be too small for the groove. So I struggled to get them to lay down in there for when I put the cam cover on. It's almost like a magic trick to get those to stay down in the groove. So, I started ordering aftermarket ones. So, f until I find out that the Volvo ones sit down in there better, I'm just going to keep getting the aftermarket ones so I don't have to fight with getting them to lay down in the groove of the head when I put the cam cover on. Things you got to deal with when doing these jobs. You know, some manufacturer started making them smaller than they was, and you got to stretch them a little bit to get them in there, and then you risk having them pop out when you put the cam cover on. So this is clean. Bottom of the head is clean because it's made true. I'm ready to put this thing on. Got to go see if it's raining out. Of course, before I put this on, I want to put this gasket on the pipe that's still in the car, the water pipe. And I also want to put the thermostat housing on because that stuff's almost impossible to get on once the head's in. So I'll put those two things on, then set the head in place and bolt it down. I'm going to clean this off. Volvo recommends that you double the gasket on this thing. 
Sometimes I go with one Volvo gasket, that's enough. But if you have aftermarket gaskets, definitely double them. But sometimes I even double the Volvo ones because it's recommended by Volvo. So let me get that gasket and mount this on here. Finally quit raining outside, but man, it's cold. Besides that, it looks like I got this thing cleaned up. I found this saturated with oil. I don't know why. Like that grime is under that screw hole, man. This thing was covered with oil. Soaked it in my little porch washer bin, brushed it off, and scraped this gasket off here. I'm going to go ahead and put this on. I got one handy. I got a couple of these somewhere, but I'm not going to look for them. I'm going to take my chance on using one gasket since it's the thicker Volvo one. And I think I'll be all right. So let me screw this thing on and then work on these exhaust manifold studs. I use my T40 Allen and I put this little 10 millimeter and 3 inch extension on there for a cheater. Tighten those three bolts down with that. A little bit tighter than wrist tight. If I had to guess I'd say 15 foot pounds. I'm going to hit this ECT with this ohm meter. See what kind of resistance it has room temperature. Let's see here. Then I'm going to test the one on the other two heads. See what they're at. Do, 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 do. I'm going to put this at 20K. See what I get. I got 2.8. And then I got 3.2. So I'm going to check it two more times. See if it gets much further off than that. Then I'm going to go check the other two I have here. I averaged the 2.8 on that one. This one is open loop. So that one I think is totally dead. And that one right there is a solid 3.2, the one that came off the car. So I'm going to say this one's working okay. This one had corrosion on the pins. I cleaned them off, still don't have nothing. This one's dead. And this one I'm going to say it's working okay. I'm going to make sure the plugs are clean on that one. The hardest thing about getting these nuts off of these studs is the rust buildup on the threads. So once you get this thing tightened in here, you can either hit the tip of the threads on the wire wheel or hit it with a drill around there. But you want to knock the rust off of it so that when you start pulling that nut off, it doesn't start turning on top of rust and they'll come right off. If you don't have a wire wheel to hit this with, or one of those wire wheels on the drill, hit it with a wire brush. A brass or steel wire brush will do the same thing. Clear the rust off so you can unscrew it without it grabbing and destroying the stud and the nut. This is the last one. In this little video, I'm going to tell you how to get the nuts off of the exhaust studs. Usually, when you pull in a cylinder head, and you undo the exhaust manifold, the nuts will stay on the studs and it's primarily because of rust. What I usually do is I take the stud with the nut on it, I drop the washer, I make a little miniature bathtub of PB blaster or some kind of penetrant that will remove rust, loosen up bolts, stuff like that. I soak them in there for at least 30 minutes. Then when I take them out of there, I screw them into the stud remover. This thing here is a stud remover. They cost about 15, 20 bucks. You open that up with a 24 millimeter. If you don't have a 24 millimeter socket, the end of this is a 3 8 inch ratchet. So you can also use a 3 8 inch ratchet on the end of there to hold it so you can tighten it with the large adjustable jaw to clamp down the teeth onto your stud threads. And I get a adjustable jaw, open it all the way up on mine, this semi-large adjustable jaw. It says 250 millimeters. Tighten it down in there. Then once I get it tight in there, I take it and I brush the end of it on the nut side. So from the nut to the end of it, I brush it either with a brass or stainless steel wire brush. You can hit it with something like that. And you can hit it with a wire wheel. Once you get that thing brushed off, you set it back in there, grab your 13 millimeter, and turn that thing right off. It'll come off easy as pie. Then I put my adjustable jaw back on there, 
loosen that up until it's loose. I turn it three or four turns. I pop this thing here with my adjustable jaw and I pull the stud out. And I set the studs aside. Once I get all 10 of them done, I screw them in the back of the cylinder head. And that's it. Nice and easy. If you do not soak them in PB Blaster or some kind of penetrant oil, and you do not knock the rust off of the ends of them with some kind of wire brush, when you try to pull the nut off, the rust or dirt will get caught in the head of the bolt and nut, and it'll grab, it'll start destroying the studs, it'll start destroying the nuts, and I've seen them even break off, you know, so you could turn this painful job into an easy job by soaking them for 30 minutes and then brushing the rust off of the ends of them. I drug this magnet across the floor. Man, look at all the metal burrs it picked up coming off that wire wheel. That'd be a good thing to do. That way you're not tracking this stuff in the house. Rake this thing across the floor. Pick up as many of the metal burrs as you can. Or just get a big magnet. I've seen people have magnets the size of brooms that they drag across the floor to clean up the floor. Something like this, I wouldn't suggest anything longer than six inches. But man, you can get this metal up from everywhere with a magnet, pull it off of there, toss it in the trash. Do, 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 do. Then you don't have to vacuum it up either. Look at that big old clump, stainless steel. I use a paper towel to pull the burrs and the metal shavings off of the magnet, throw it in the trash. You can use a rag, anything, but probably don't want to grab it with your hands. It may poke into your skin. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.